Hello, and welcome to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. This 5th edition D&D adventure, The Heretic, was written and run by your DM, Scott. And now, please enjoy episode 479, titled, I've Done a Little Bit of Work in a Morgue Before. Actual play begins immediately. Hello, I'm Scott, your DM tonight for this 5E adventure, The Heretic. With me this evening, on my right, is... I am Michael, playing Brother Byron, a human acolyte utilizing the grave domain and newly made Fist of Omera. I'm Tom, playing Alder Rusha, a male human cleric and rogue who is a Fist of Amera. I'm Mike, playing Marduk, a male half-orc fighter, graduate of the Academy, and new Fist of Amira. I am Jim. I am playing Grodor, one of the mighty Fists of Amira. He is a frail hobgoblin warlock from Dolgug, who is searching for truth, knowledge, and power. I'm John. I'm playing Melody, a female human cleric, the third of the exemplar family, Harmony. I'm an ex-ambassador turned political operative. I'm Thomas. I'll be playing Gabrielle D'Angelis. She's a female human paladin and a holy fist of Amira on a mission to the hollowed lands. So you make your way into the village, which looks something like this. It is a map. We need to leave. We need to get out quick. So, Copshire, you are on the north side of the map, so on the left side of the map, on the south way, making your way towards the village center. Again, it's evening, so there's light traffic on the streets. Villagers moving to and fro with their business. Some of them wheeling carts. Some animals, stray animals around. Goats and a few pigs. And it's a village. It's the epitome of a village. And you make your way down the south way towards the village center where the tavern is. And you see a relatively singular sight. A halfling on a pony in the middle of the village center and kind of watching your approach as you come in. What do you do? This isn't the same halfling, is it? It is not the same halfling. Oh, good. Watch him watching us. Yes, as you make your way towards the village center, it it seems to be that way. You're not quite at hailing distance yet. By his attire or what he's carrying with him on the pony, is he a traveler or does he appear to be local? He appears to be... Local. He's dressed relatively well on the pony. He has a nice suit that he looks like to be wearing. He is uh, thin, which many halflings are, but some of them are portly as well. But he's thin and has brownish red hair kind of pushed over to the side. He has a smile on his face. And he looks... Gabriel's right. Give me my crossbow. Mm -hmm. As you get closer, he hails you. Hey there! Welcome to Cockshire. Evening. Are you the welcoming committee? I am the pillar of this fine little community. My name is Merrick Plumbottom, and it's great to meet your acquaintance. Okay. Are you looking for a place to stay for the evening? I guess with the story we've got, I'm the leader here, so I'm going to step forward and produce my writ of heritage and say, hey... I'm of the exemplar family Harmony, making my way back home. This is my retinue. Uh, Wonderful. It's so nice to meet you. We've traveled through before, and strangely enough, I don't remember a pillar of the community greeting me. Is it come with the fine pony, or is that yours? This would be my pony. It goes by the name of Dappleshanks. I thought you might have a name. Yeah, it, it definitely has a name. I just thought maybe I could welcome you to town, and you could come into the wind whistle and have yourself a fine dinner while some people take care of your car and your horses. And I can tell you all about Copshire. It'd be nice to meet some new people and and have a nice conversation. Could you tell us why you knew you were going to be here? I mean, Um, you were standing here waiting for us to show up. Actually, go ahead and... Well, you can always do this when you want to get to the manner of why someone's doing something or if they're being truthful or honest. You can always ask for an insight check, just so you guys know. So if you ever want to know what's behind something, it's always easy to make that call. (laughs) Well, I'm going to let Melanie handle that one. This town doesn't have a mayor. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm um, the mayor. You get the, the, the distinct feeling, uh, Melody. Okay, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we mention sorry, what yeah. the hell you for just the, rolled? For people without eyeballs, which is all of you, Melody has rolled a 20. A natural, a natural one. Roll, mm-hmm. With an additional four for her skill and wisdom. For a total of 24 on her insight check. Brother Byron, you were taking the the manner of Merrick as well. And how did you do? All is revealed to Melody, let's just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but I wanted to give him his chance because he did roll. I rolled a 16, which is decent, but yeah. we're near Melody. so That's a good roll as well. You both realize that Merrick Plumbottom has something else in his mind. And he definitely is welcoming you, and, and he seems to be sincere in that he's glad to see you, but he probably doesn't make it effort to see every person that comes through his little thorp. So, yeah, there's something going on there. Melody, you get the idea with your natural 20 that he seems to have worry lines underneath his eyes. Like, maybe he hasn't slept in a couple nights. He definitely... I mean, he's got a smile, and he is being friendly, but... Something is weighing on his soul. No amount of halfling friendliness can wash away what his eyes reveal to you. I did ask him a question. Did he answer it? Yeah, I was going to get to that, actually, so thank you. Okay. Well, we had some people that were on the road out in the fields, and they came in and mentioned that a couple hills away there were some travelers that were coming to town, so I thought I would just come and greet you and welcome you to our fine little village. Come, have a drink. Have some food. I'm taking a look around the village just to make sure nothing looks strange. Like, there isn't any people when there should be, or there should be people when there isn't. No, you see shopkeepers closing up for the night because Uh it's getting later. You see people walking about town, kids playing off to the side. I mean, it's not a big town. Like I mentioned, it's maybe 100 people. Normal hustle and bustle. Right. Normal hustle and bustle of Not a some kind of small village. Well coordinated ambush. No, you don't get the feeling that or poorly coordinated ambush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't get the feeling that there are a bunch of people behind houses with knives waiting for you to let your guard down. Ooh, you get the idea that this is a small village in the country of Amira. You're being greeted by its pillar, Merrick Plumbottom, who is friendly, but seems to have something worrying him and something on his mind. Unless somebody else has something, I think we can work it out of him at the end, out of the rain. Yeah. Yes, as the storm clouds continue to build. Shall impress upon his hospitality, which he so graciously offers. One of the tavern workers come out and take a hold of the horses and lead them behind the wind whistle to feed them and take care of them for the evening. And Merrick... Tell me about Copshire, Merrick, I say, as we're all gathering in. He ties off his pony, Dappleshanks. He smiles. Well, we're known for a lot of things, actually. We, we've got a lot of things that we're known for. We have some of the best grain, which make a potent lager that bears the name of our village. Uh, On the western side of the river there? Oh, yeah, Copshire. Right, right, Copshire uh, Ale. Copshire uh, Ale, this is where it comes from. Yeah, exactly. So we're kind of known for that. Uh, we're known for our friendly disposition. Hmm. Uh, so that's something that we're always known for. And uh, that's you coming through, my friend. Oh, thank you. So glad to hear it. And he leads you into what's marked one on the map, which is the Wind Whistle, which is a relatively sizable tavern for the size of the village itself. Again, there's probably a couple hundred people who live in Copshire overall, but when you go into the I'm wind not go, no, I'm not going in. I'm grabbing him by the shoulder as he enters the door and kind of spinning him around and pushing him against the wall. Okay. And I'm saying, Whoa. you want to tell us what's really going on here? Because I don't understand why you're sitting on a horse to only then get off the horse. Were you going to chase us with your horse? Is there something going on here? Please tell me the truth. Um, Burden your soul, my friend. I'm using persuasion to try to get 
Uh, intimidation. Oh, that was borderline intimidation. Oh, it was, but that's so, just my style. So. <laughs> okay, go ahead and make your roll. I rolled the 19. Yes, you did. He blanches a bit at the physicalness of your approach. He s- says, "I, uh, um, I, I just wanted to make sure that I got a chance to meet you. I was on the other side of the village when I got the news that that people were coming, and so I, I hopped on Dapple Shanks and." made sure I made it to the village center to welcome you because, truth be told, I, I am looking for competent help. We're a small little village, and we don't have much of a soul watch in our town. And uh, actually, I'm I'm the, the watch lord of town in, in addition to the pillar. And we got some stuff going on that's kind of concerning, and I was hoping to talk to you about it inside, away from all the other villagers. So the tavern's empty. Mostly. It's not quite dinner time yet. Everyone's closing up shops, so it'll get busy in about an hour or so. But for right now, it's pretty empty, and we could find a corner that we could maybe talk in. And, uh, you know, like, dinner could be on the house. I reach down to my rapier, untie right. the scarf, tie it around my head, lead the way. Very well. So he leads the way into the tavern. and Gabriel gives you an exhausted look <laughs> as she, too, enters. Uh, that is to say, gives Alder an exhaustive look. Yes, that's who I thought you meant. Yeah, I'm sure Groller rolled his, rolls his eyes and saunders in. I stroll back a little head. slower so that I could talk with Gabrielle. You have no idea that this is how many halflings in every town we go into, that there's some kind of problem. I'm getting tired of that shit. Like that, then? I have yet to have. Yes, because I'm taking of care of it every time. So let's go sit down. Yeah. All just in cranky mood. Apparently. If we had just sat down and had the meal, he would have gotten to the point just as quickly. If there's no one else in here, it would have been clear that something else was going on, but instead you physically threatened him in order to figure out something that only made us look incredibly rude. Before we walk through the door and we know it's an empty place. I'm sorry, but I'm not a fan of walking into traps. I'd rather confront it before it happens. You, t- you cannot argue with me that this was not weird. It was very weird, but also, we're seasoned people. We're Fists of Amira. Hey, hush. <laughs> cover, <laughs> mistress. I, I was sorry. Right. I thought that it was like the words you wanted, but I We can take thing. care of ourselves. I don't think anything this village could put up for an ambush would honestly stump us. I'd much rather have entered into this conversation with an air of civility instead of a reminder that we could at any time indeed then, beat the shit out of a tiny halfling. Then you play that role. If my job is to protect Lady Melody, that's what I was doing. Next time I'm going to stab Mel and then go do my job and tell you <laughs> to do yours. And then she in a huff walks Mel? into the bar. All right. Merrick is actually inside already. He let you talk in private because he was just trying to have some decorum. And behind the bar you see a large half-orc who is drying some glasses off. Mm-hmm. Merrick points towards a long table off to one corner of the inn, welcomes you to the table. So I'm assuming everyone sits down? Yeah, I'm going to sit down at the table. Alder chooses a a chair farther away and sulks a bit. Okay. Merrick waves over towards the half-orc, and the half-orc starts making his way towards your table. And Merrick says, this is the innkeeper. His name is Vort. Vort has owned this inn for several decades now. He's a retired adventurer himself who is a wonderful, upstanding member of the community, and he'll take your order if you want something to eat or drink. And it's on the house, again. It's, it's completely on the house. Sure. So Vort comes over, kind of stands at the table with a notepad and pen. I want to make it clear to Vort, this free dinner is on the pretense that we will do things for this man. I don't want to be under such pretenses. I will pay for our meals. And drinks such as they are, folks, go ahead. As you wish. We've got some goat stew on the menu tonight, bread, or or ale. I do want to try the local. Anyone interested? No, I assume that they have a house special, and I'm fine with that as well. Just bring a loaf of your bread and some garlic or onion butter. 
and a Kopshire Ale. All around. What do you recommend? Bort looks at you and says, Goat stew, bread, Kopshire Ale. Yeah, that. He steps away from the table once he takes your order. Yeah. And How much? Three gold, you think? This size town, probably just a silver piece and maybe half a copper, so maybe a silver and a half for each meal, and there's six of you, so nine silver. If okay. you tip them a silver, it'll be a gold piece. That makes it even and easy, yeah. Okay. Merrick is thumbing the table nervously while you were placing your order. Really, I I, I would have taken care of it. It'd be a, it's the least we could do. Um, Apparently, we're on a mission to create as many enemies as we can as we pass through the countryside. No, I don't mind hearing out what you need. It's just that I don't want it to be assumed that I can help you. So I'm not going to take that freedom fair, fair enough. with the That's assumption fair. that I will. Perhaps you can get us talking to you. Perhaps you can buy us breakfast in the morning. Oh, that that would be that would be lovely. I would I would absolutely love that. Okay, so I got a problem. I don't really have the resources right this second with a impending war to handle it. So it all started, I think, two nights ago. During the middle of the night, somebody, I guess, was on the Sundaro farm. The Sundaros are, are goat farmers, and they killed a goat and let it dry and hung it up to bleed out. Although there wasn't a lot of blood on the ground, there was a little bit, but but not a lot. So I don't I don't know what happened to all the blood. Uh, they found the goat like this cuz Yeah, it's so ordinary the, practice for butchering. Right. No, no, the, it wasn't supposed to be butchered. Uh, Ulris is the owner of the farm. Ulris Sundaro. Ulris reported to me that this occurred and again, we don't there's a total of 3 soul watches in the city and I'm one of them. And so we take eight-hour shifts. I did my best to investigate, but I, I don't have a lot of resources. And so, so yeah, I chalked it up to, you know, maybe sending extra guard duty over during the night. Like, kind of check out his place a little bit more often during the night for the sole watch that was on duty. Uh-huh. The goat shepherd slaughtered one of their animals and found you... it slaughtered. Oh, found, found it. it slaughtered. Okay, right, I yeah. misunderstood. I yeah, also no, was yeah. confused. So Ulris woke up and found the, the goat. He's he's the goat owner. He found it slaughtered in the barn where he keeps his goats at night. And it wasn't him and it wasn't his relatives. Did right, it wasn't he has two kids, he has two boys, and it wasn't it wasn't his boys. He has a lady friend. Uh, I'm glad for him. Yeah. Um, what about the Souls Guard? Did they find anything during the night? The Soul Watch, I think you mean, because that, that's who patrols the cities. The Soul Watch, that was mostly me because I was on duty during the day. I checked around, and there was lots of goat prints. It looked like maybe there could have been some horse prints on the ground, but I'm, I'm not really super good with prints. You know, I'm, I'm not a detective. So, right. yeah. I, uh, Do you think to ask this owner? He surely knows what goat prints look like. Yes, he did recognize the goat prints. He said that he didn't have a horse in the area, so that was a little bit confusing. And horses aren't known to string up meat. Well, none that I know of. Right. I mean, Dappleshanks is she's really shy, and she'll just run away at any loud noise. She's not going to be uh, killing goats, that's for sure. So... We put an extra patrol to go by his barn and his home the next night, which was last night. And in the morning, there was a dead goat again, and there was a body. One of the goat hands who helps out on the farm uh, was strung up and bled out as well. This is two nights in a row, and you're concerned about this night? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, it seems to be getting worse. And Are you uh, investigating? Have you examined the corpse of the person bled out? I mean, were they bled out from wounds, or are you suggesting that there's a sacrifice going on? Yeah, see, it, they were bled out from a wound right across their neck, just like the uh, a, a jagged wound, just like the goats. But and with no it, blood mess around. But not a lot of blood mess around. It's almost like the blood disappeared. Was taken. The, 
or, or taken or something. I, I don't know. I, I don't. This is not normal for our village, and this is not something that's ever happened before in the history of our village. There was one one murder about 20 years ago when old man Holg Benrift killed his father in a drunken rage. I mean, that happened about two decades ago, but uh, this is not something that normally occurs in, in our village. And I, I don't know what to do. And I saw some armed warrior types coming into town, and I thought maybe they could help find out what's going on because I don't have a lot of answers, and I don't want to end up with more dead bodies. And we're a good no, I you know, you. day's travel to try to get someone to come help. Yeah. And uh, It's okay. We are here for the night, and if only for our safety, we will certainly spend the night ensuring the safety of this town. But we are not trained detectives either. I will do my best. I can send word back for more intensive help if that's what you folks need, but I will put a guard on it tonight. We will do some investigating. I've done a little bit of work in a morgue before, so I will take a peek at what I can see on the bodies, but... We could stay the oh, night at the goat farm. That's, right. that's awesome. I mean, that's just... That's so wonderful. I would ask that you lock up that pony of yours tonight. I don't want that suspect around. Really? Yeah. Double shakes? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm not going to question a, an investigator who has worldly experience. That's something I'll do. Dapple Shanks will, will be in her barn tonight for the whole night. I'll make sure of it. Good. Give her some oats. Oh, yeah. Lots of oats. She's a good girl. She better be. Oh, look, dinner's coming. And dinner is served. And it is goat stew. I wonder where they got the goat from. <laughs> You're not too far off the truth. You guys have yourself a robust hearty meal of goat stew and bread with garlic butter, Copshire ale. The inn starts to fill up as the night carries on. There was probably maybe five people in the inn when you walked in, so it wasn't very difficult to find an area that was off to the side and quiet enough to talk and have a conversation. There's probably now 20, 25 people in the inn as you're finishing up your dinner and eating your dinner so you're welcome to have conversation with Merrick if you want during dinner, or he can take his plate elsewhere and visit other village members. If you, for some reason, want to talk without him being around, he wouldn't be. For now, I would like to confer with our group, and we will meet with you before the evening begins later, Merrick. Yeah, I'll go visit some of my friends and uh, compatriots. Just call me over when you want to chat, okay? Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, but it's not right right now. I don't know. <laughs> okay. He slurps down the rest of his goat stew and goes heads out to border up Dapple Shanks for the night. Now that we can breathe easy. Yeah. After he leaves, I don't know for sure, but I would defer to Grodor or Alder or Gabrielle, but it sounds like some kind of ritual attack is going on. It was goats, and now it's a person? Goat and a person, both. It seems like it might be escalating if it's a... But it's the ritual aspect or the the sacrifice aspect of it uh, concerns me. Indeed. I am trained in religion. I've been around enough to study more than just a mirror side of things. Can I roll to see if there's like a ritual or a religion around that's native to this part before we spread out here that I might know about? Sure. Go ahead and make a roll. I've got an 18. You think back to all your training and all that you've read about and taken in when it comes to the subject of religion, which is quite a bit of information. You realize that there's not something specific to central Amira, which is where this is kind of located at. Copshire is very much centrally located. But it seems like... When it comes to blood, demons and devils, man, they love them some blood. If you're looking at rituals and trying to find things out along those lines, it usually has to do with demons or devils, unless it's not a ritual at all. That's kind of what you've got with your role. Yeah, I'm guessing they're using the blood for a ritual or something is consuming the blood because that's what it does. Sure. 
and I relay, I bet you uh, a healing potion. It's some sort of relation to one of the old ruin lords, a devil, or one of their followers, maybe even demons, that are active in this area. But I turn to Gabrielle and ask, are you able or strong enough to detect such creatures if we're talking about demons and devils? If it were only goats and now one person, I think it would be a follower, especially with the amount of guards at this place. A, a demon could rip through this place. Actually, you something you just said gave me a chill, because I'm thinking, are we talking about building up to a summoning? That's a concern. Uh, certainly a concern. I don't think Amira would be pleased of such a thing happening here. <laughs> That's an understatement, yeah. If we have time this sure. evening, we should maybe just head over there and get a lay of the neighborhood and maybe talk to the, the owner of the farm. I now have an even more ominous feeling about this gathering, this bad turn of weather and this gathering storm. Yeah. I'm wondering... If it was meant to stop us here, huh? Or more possibly, Amira will move us where she needs us to be. But on the third night... You know, there's been two sacrifices, if we want to think of it like this, and now a possible third one tonight, and there's a gathering storm. Could be a culmination. Yeah. Thank you. That's the word, culmination. It seems like something's been building. Before we set up to protect or guard the area, I would like a look at the corpses, and I know Byron is a healer. Brother. Yeah, I wanted to know where they were discovered as well. I might be able to detect where this ritual was done. Maybe we could learn from the scene. Yeah, the goat herds will probably be better than the Perhaps here. we should ask Merrick if there's any... Is there anything significant or local history about this goat herd farm? Is there some standing stone or... I also either. think the goat herds or the goat family would know better about that. Whoever the the family tending the farm, I True. want to involve Merrick as little as possible in this. He seems a bit more of an obstacle than a help. While he has a lot of information for people who just walked into town, I don't know that he knows much more than the people who experienced it. This is your spear. You throw it. He rubbed me the wrong <laughs> way. I want to talk to the folk who had kin killed. I want to talk to people on the ground. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's never comfortable when a halfling pokes his nose into your business. He might not seem to know much, but he is part of the watch, and he should know about what goes on around in his town. It's an overview, but we want details. Brother Byron, do you think you'd be able to look at the corpses and get some information for us? Sure. Where are they exactly? At the goat herd's farm somewhere. We'll head out that way and ask. I'll uh, check in where that is with the barkeep. Good. Okay. Uh, and I asked Vort where uh, he gets his goats from. It's like a typical case of cattle mutilation. Mm. Aliens. That was my first thought. But <laughs> I wasn't going to say uh, Demons are aliens in this world, I think. Yeah, that uh, works. What are they called? The uh, Aberrants? Yeah, yeah, aberrants. I'm thinking of is the holders people. and illithids definitely fit the bill as well. But right. I mean, it, I did a religion thing going on. <laughs> my vibe on it is demons and devils. But just as you're finishing up dinner, you're finishing up your ale. You walk up to Vort and ask him where he gets his goats from, mm -hmm. and he says, uh, "Well, tonight's meal was from Sundaro Farm." They had a couple of dead ones, so just put them in the stew. That's what you do. Thank you. For it. Merrick comes back into the inn after sequestering Dapple Shanks for the night. He stops by the front door and is looking towards you, but not wanting to approach without being waved over yet. So he's keeping his distance, kind of making small talk with some people that have a table near the entryway but is keeping it like keeps looking over towards you to see if you need him. I'm going to wave over whoever's game to talk to him. I want directions to the farm, so I'm not quite done here yet. I will go along. I sense that there is going to be a need for the Spear of Amira before the night is through. So you two are going to talk to Merrick, or are you doing something well, else? We're probably going to ask Merrick where, exactly where the farm is. Can he show us maybe to the farm? Ask him what happened to the body that was killed the other night or last night. 
So Merrick comes over to your table, smiles nervously. Hi there. Uh, well, the farm, the Sundaro farm, is just down the road. Uh, you would stay on the south way. It has a sign out front that says Sundaro Farm. And, yeah, he could definitely, if you wanted to talk to Ulrus and get more information or look around the farm. The body, though, we took that and brought it into the tower. And when you were coming into town, there was a small tower, maybe 20 feet on a hill. It's marked number seven on your map. It's on a hillock, and it's about 20 feet high. And he has the dead body in there. That's his temporary morgue for the body. So uh, do you want me to take you to be introduced to Ulrus and his family? Or did you want me to uh, take you to, to the body, to, to Galvin, and, and look at the body? I'm not sure what you guys, what, where you want to go first. I'm happy to take you. Lifra Dumel, she's the technical leader in that. Right. I wasn't quite part of this conversation. You uh, um, I say have we, a leeway here. I say we check the body out first before we head over to the farm. Okay. That'll give us information to go on or to ask. So when we get to the farm, we can say we saw this or it was this was done when you saw it. What did you see? I'm aware that Gabriel's a paladin, right? Yeah. Yes. And is it reasonable to know what some of her capabilities are? I, I mean, we train together, what, right? Most yeah, people you, know what most classes can kind of do. I'm just wondering, if it was a ritual sacrifice, would you... I would certainly have a chance to be able to detect where it happened. No, or I was even thinking, like, if you could sense evil or whatever, maybe that gives a clue and confirms a few things that we only suspect right now. Yeah. If the ritual site shows up as evil, the answer is there. Amira considers this evil. Gotcha. So, yeah, we should check that out, but I think we can wait until after we see the body, because it would be useful to know what kind of things happen to it. Brother Byron was interested in that as well. So, yeah, Merrick, did I get his name right? Yes. Good. Merrick Plumbottom, I'll be happy to take you to the tower, to the body of Galvin Strum. He leads you out of the tavern to the north, and then a quick jaunt to the west, a quick jaunt to the south to the pathway leading up to the tower, which is number seven again on your map. He takes a deep breath before opening the door, seems to try to steady himself, opens the door and leads you in. You're led into a large open area, about 10 feet high. There's some steps in the corner that lead upwards. There's a large table on the western half of the room that has a body on it. And there's torches in sconces in the wall that are burning right now, shedding good light in the room for you to be able to see. He points towards the body and takes a couple steps in the other direction, as if letting you have the run of the place if you want, because he's not interested in getting close to a dead body again. Brother Byron, do you want to take the lead here? Yeah. So I walk up to it and around it and see what I can see from a distance first. What becomes really obvious at first glance is his neck. There is a gash across his neck that is deep and wide, almost ear-to-ear kind of gash. That's what you can tell from a distance. He's still clothed. He has on uh, what you would say is a somewhat nice shirt, It looks like a shirt that you would wear if you were going out for the night and a pair of leather breeches, and he's still clothed. And that's what you can tell from a distance. Okay, well, I move closer and look at the wound. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Or, if you prefer, you can use medical. Medicine. While he's doing that, I'm going to just help him look and look to see if there's any sign of a struggle or any other damage done to him. Okay. Make another roll, Brother Byron, because basically Grodor gave you the help action, which gives you advantage. 22, 16 plus 6. Oh, wow, plus 6. That's a nice medicine roll. You can tell, and Grodor confirms with you, that the cut 
from ear to ear was not very smooth. It wasn't like a knife's edge. It was more jagged and rough of a cut and wide, almost like, I don't know, almost, yeah, maybe like a claw. Okay. That becomes very obvious when you get close. You notice his shirt is opened up halfway or so, so it's buttoned halfway. He's a younger man. You would say probably in his early to mid-20s. He is definitely in shape. He, he was someone who got a good workout during the day. You can tell on his upper torso there is a huge purple bruise. Like he was struck with something almost like a hammer or something really wide and hard and thick that struck him on the left side of his chest and left a deep, deep bruise. Okay. Who's still here? Everyone but Mm -hmm. Mel, I think. Unless you went along, Mel. No. I'm going to go to the farm and do some, just some questioning. Okay. I'm still checking the rest of the body. I'm sorry. Mel shouldn't be going by herself to the farm. I thought, especially if our cover is that we're escorting her. So while we're in... If Gabrielle wanted to do a search for demonic activity there... Should yeah. you accompany me? Yes. I didn't know that's you right. Were okay. Going that's right. That's where I was going. Okay. I start removing the shirt and checking the body for any other wounds. Yes. You basically unclothe him and notice that there is a bruise on his right lower back, very similar, and one on his what would be almost like his thigh and his upper leg left side again, another huge bruise there that oh, looks man. like some sort of impact that was bludgeoning. But no other cuts or gashes that we can see. No, just across his neck is all. Marduk turns to Byron, and if this throat was cut by something like a claw, an animal or bear attack would leave much more scrapes and gashes and scarring. Right. This seems odd. Is there a creature that is known to these parts that will attack in attacks in such a way where it'll beat something up and then drain its blood? Grodor, go ahead and make a nature check, please. Got an 18. Right. You have a good familiarity with the nature of the Central Amiran Plains, and there is nothing that you can think of there are some Goliath tribes in the mountains to the east, a couple days travel yet, that are known for their damage they can do with their fists, but they don't use claws. They, they don't drain they beat, Yeah, they bodies. beat these up like this, but they don't drain the blood out typically. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, yeah, so even with your good roll, you're coming up blank with what could have caused this. Does it look like this guy was attacked from more than one direction? You mentioned a strike on the back of the leg. I think he got hit in his chest and then in his back and then his legs. Right. Those are the three areas he got hit in. The timing is not able to be ascertained. Maybe if you had an area that it occurred where you could see the footprints or, or some kind of the dance of battle, if you will, or of the attack or the assault, but you don't have that ability here to see how it happened. And the wounds happened around the same time enough for you to be sure that they were around the same time. So they have the same amount of bruising, the same amount of coloration. It wasn't like one bruise was much more developed than the other two, leading you to think that the timing was different. It looks like all three strikes came in quick succession. And I'm thinking that we should probably get to this scene of where this stuff happened soon before it rains and washes all the evidence away. Merrick speaks up from the distance, and he's like, hey, um, yeah, uh, we kind of did a lot of walking, and, and then the goats were let out for the day, and he was found strung up 
in the goat barn, but if you want to see, like, the footprints and stuff, they're probably been trampled over quite a bit. Sorry, I didn't know it was going to be important, and I needed to get around and get the body down from where it was at. So, sorry. No, that's fine. We need to go check it out, I guess. But Gregor mentioned investigation, and I'd like to make an investigation role to try to, I'm not a specialist as far as healing goes, but just if there's something we overlooked, something that was on the body, something that was an indication that he was struggling, don't know, but just to see if there's something we missed. Also, being strung up suggests coordination and cooperation, so there may be more than one, well, there's likely more than one entity or person involved with killing and a sacrifice. This is getting worse and worse the more we look into it. Yeah, unfortunately, I only rolled an 11 total. Well, what you're able to ascertain from the 11 is that the one thing that seemed to you odd, having grown up in your entire life, you generally, if you're out and about, wear undergarments, or at least on your lower half. He was not wearing any undergarments on his lower half when Brother Byron disrobed him to check his body for damage and wounds. That seemed to you a little bit odd. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, the role just wasn't quite there. But for what you were able to pick up and what kind of caught your curiosity a little bit was like, hey, that's a little odd. I do share it with the others. And I guess now would be a good time to move along and check out the site as best we can. I just want to check out the body one more time. How fresh is this? Was this yesterday, last night? This was last night, so it hasn't been quite 24 hours. It's probably somewhere in the vicinity of about 18 hours that you know of that he's been dead. If it happened around midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, it was found in the morning, but rigor mortis had already set in, so he had to be dead for at least a couple hours. So it had to happen either around midnight or sometime in the early morning hours. Hey, Merrick, did this guy live on the farm or around the farm? Or where oh, he was, um, the barn that he was tied up in? Yeah, Galvin was a helper. He helped around the farm. He had his own place where he lived. He was a little bit, like, across the stream. So he gives you the general direction of where 10 would be on your map. Right. Which is, as you look at the map, kind of in the lower right-hand corner, there's a couple of small little buildings there, a small little farm there. That's where Galvin lived. There should have been no reason for him to be there in the middle of the night. Gotcha. That's strange. That, I mean, he's at the farm during the day, but but he was killed at night, so that's weird, right? It's weird. Let's go visit the farm. Okay, and then we'll take a, a quick break with this group. We'll go to the other two, Mel and Gabrielle, who made their way down South Way to the southern edge of the town and to a sign that says Sundaro Farm. If you look on your map in the top right-hand corner, yeah, there's a two and a three. The two is the one-story homestead with a small stone gate around it, kind of like a kind of like a little wall around it, up to your waist or so. And then what's three on the map is a L-shaped barn that uh, houses with with a pen kind of connected to it to make it into a square. That is where many of the goats are out and about right now, eating and drinking at the end of the night. So you see a house and a barn. There is a man in the barn area, outside of it, in the pen area, I should say, who is tending to the goats. He looks like a farmer. He's broad-shouldered, has shorter brown hair, kind of bushy, pale-skinned, and is working with the goats. You don't see anyone else around right now besides that, him and them. How do you want to approach this, Mel? I ask as we begin the walk-up. Well, I'd like to 
ask the family where they found the stuff. If this is one of their sons lost, I'd like uh, info on what he was doing out late at night or opinions, if not their son, why they would be found there. Okay. So yeah. first let's talk to the family, get a pass to go do an investigation of the site. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. You introduce yourself to the family and get formal approval. I want to check out how this place feels magically. I can do something real quick that won't even be intrusive. Are you separating for that? Yeah, I'll stay outside the door and join you after I finish my first incantation. So, Mel, I'm going to say you walk up the pathway that's visible on the map that leads right to a gate into the pen of the goats where the one person that you see a farmer type individual is working, feeding the goats and taking care of them. Gabrielle, you walk some of that way as well. Are you doing, cause there's two distinct areas. There's the home and then there's the barn yeah. and the pen area. If Are I you heard correctly? The barn is where they discovered the bodies. So that I'm is sure correct. You're... If it happened in the home, We'll find that out later. I'm going to check out the barn because that's much more likely. To so happen. then you are walking up with Mel to the yeah. individual. You're right, but I'm there. going to stay outside the doorway while she's having a conversation, casting my incantation. Okay. Mel, I don't have a great picture of the individual, but oh, that's so. pretty much what he looks like. He is, like I said, a, a larger, broad-shouldered man with short, cropped brown hair, a five o'clock shadow, probably somewhere in his late thirties, early forties. And attitude. Um, he looks at you much the way the picture is depicting right now of him, which is to say he's got a frown that borders on a scowl. A little bit of a sneer. And he says, Who the hell are you? What are you doing on my farm? Merrick got us doing security to make sure no one else dies tonight. I'm here to he, offer help in that regard. I he's step saying, out of the doorway so that he can see me when that is said. Yeah, it's like, like they're also, like, it's not just a frail noble. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a paladin type here. So Merrick, in his undying wisdom, sent two women to help me. Now, he sent a knight and an investigator, and I will bow to your wisdom here in terms of I don't want to get in your way. It's just I want to make sure no one dies tonight. If you don't think anyone's going to die tonight, we'll just sit out in the woods and make sure that doesn't happen. But if you want to help me figure out who killed your your goat herd, I might be able to do something about that. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Okay. Finally something I'm normally trained in. <laughs> <laughs> I've rolled a 16. He breathes in deeply, kind of sniffs, and looks at both of you back and forth like he's weighing his options. Gabrielle stands tall with her... She's in armor, right? Yeah, she's in her chainmail. She's got her uh, pole hammer in both hands. That's fine. What do you need to know? This must not have been your kid. No. It was a farmhand. His name was Galvin Strom. He's a good kid. Came by each day and helped me out. Having a hard time running in the farm without him just one day in. But... Yeah, it's a terrible thing. Where was he found? Um, who found him? I found him. Can you show me where? Sure can. He opens up a gate that leads into the pen, which is quite messy with goat droppings and hay and a bunch of other things that are unpleasant to, to walk in, but he walks you into the barn in the L-shaped barn, there is a walkway along the outside wall. And then within is like a penned area where the goats stay. So there's an L-shaped goat pen inside. And then there's a walkway that has utensils, bales of hay, feed, casks of water, some shearing type of utensils, stuff like that. As well, he says he was hung up just inside the door, left-hand side, on that hook right up there. We use it for the goats that we kill, but 
I didn't kill any goats yesterday. And there was a goat on one of the hooks to the left of the door. And there was, there was Galvin on the other hook to the right of the door. That's where I found him. All right. You probably don't want to be out much later than this if you fear a reenactment of yesterday, but I will come back down if I have more questions. Anything you want to mention before you go? Well, I mean, he was hanging upside down, and there should have been a ton of blood because his neck was cut just like the goat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's dry here. so And it's, you can tell there. it's just it's all dry. The only thing that was odd was it looked like there were a couple of horse prints, like hooves, that were just inside the door. It's kind of hard to see them because this is kind of packed earth, and you can see there's a lot of straw on the ground as well and hay. Mm-hmm. So it was barely noticeable, but I know what I saw before everyone came and trampled in the scene. I saw some some hoof marks, some horse hoof marks, I think. I don't, I don't know why anyone would come in to the barn with, with a horse in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what Galvin was doing here. He wasn't slated to start until sunrise. There's creatures with hooves that aren't, that aren't horses. I suggest you got any cold iron, hang it over your door tonight. Cold iron, huh? I got some cold iron. I'll do that. I got two kids to look after. We'll make sure to keep a watch over your house tonight. If this is where it's been happening, two goats and then a goat and a kid. Or is it One goat then two nights kid. ago, a goat and a kid Last yesterday. Night. Don't want to know what's going to happen tonight. We'll be sure to watch. Me neither. I don't know why this is happening to me or this farm, but I want it to stop. I don't want anyone else getting hurt. Okay. On that end... If you have any spare uh, cold iron, we could use it up here before you go to bed. I'll take a look. Okay. I'll see you in a bit. He makes his way out of the barn, seeming to trust you since America sent you. Okay. And makes his way down the path and into the house. At this point, Gabrielle grabs hold of her medallion that she's been hiding beneath her chain jacket, Mm -hmm. the fist of Amira, and utters a quiet word. In Celestial, as her eyes shine bright and she detects evil. Is there anything within 60 feet that might register on my senses? Or trails to something. Or trails to something. Divine sense, that is. I'll use it again later tonight if it doesn't find anything, but I was wondering if it left any traces. Right now, there's no trace of anything evil. Okay. In the bottom. So... Uh, and outside the barn as well, because it's 60 feet, so it's a good distance. Right. That's, a, like, most of the house itself, so it definitely can't be the farmer. He isn't lying that well. And he did not register as evil. Cool. I didn't really doubt it. He seemed particularly perturbed about how badly this was affecting his farm, and he wouldn't really do it to himself. But, you know, wanted to be sure. I'm not always the best judge of character. And right around this time, walking up the pathway to get to the barn area is Merrick leading the rest of your party towards the house and the barn area after their investigation into the tower. So once again, your groups are drawn together. And as the first drops of rain beginning to drizzle down from above, not storm, just some rain preceding it, we'll call it there for the night. Thank you all for playing tonight. I appreciate all your good work and role playing tonight. And thank you to the listeners for staying tuned to the story. I hope you're enjoying it as it gets a little bit deeper and a little more interesting with each passing week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're uh, having as good a time as the players are and as I am as DM. Have yourselves a great week and we'll talk with you soon. Thank you for listening to Knights of the Night Actual Play Podcast. If you'd like to send us a question, comment, or feedback, you can reach us in a number of ways, including Twitter at KOTN underscore podcast or by emailing us at feedback at KOTNpodcast.com. And don't forget the iTunes reviews. We also have a Facebook page, which can be found at facebook.com slash KOTN.podcast. 
While on Facebook, you can join like-minded folks at our fan page at facebook.com slash groups slash KOTN fan. And lastly, there's our blog at kotnpodcast.com where there's an Amazon link on the right-hand side. For those of you who'd like a more steady way to help us pay the bills, or if you live outside the U.S., you can help by donating to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash KOTN. And please remember to join us next week for more mystery and adventure. It's a gigantic blank map. <laughs> I forgot this town is a featureless expanse. I hate getting trapped in these. Oh, there it is. I can see the map. Yeah, it's tough to when you have it zoomed in on the on the nation map, and then you you go to a a new screen. It tends to be, yeah, kind of watching your approach as you come in. What do you do? Yellow. Obviously. No. Well, it's never comfortable when a halfling pokes his nose into your business. I think we all agree Might on not. that. <laughs> I know where the goats are. In my belly. <laughs> By the way, real quick, it's 1015, so I can I can transition out if everyone wants to call the night, or we can go for another scene if we want to uh, do another scene. I just don't want to force anyone if they've got I know Tom's exhausted, and I know Jim sometimes has to be up, so I'm just throwing it out there. I'm tired, but don't have a hard stop, so whenever. Tom? Tom fell asleep. I didn't have fall asleep. I was muted. Yeah, this scene doesn't involve me, so I, it's fine for Melody and yeah. Gabrielle to have a scene. My okay. notion was that we would just kind of cut to the farm where we were doing some investigating, and then we could leave it on I don't know if you plan to have us attacked there during the night, but, like, if you that's I was going to cast Detect Evil, and if something registered, you could just leave it on a cliffhanger like that. Right. And that would be fine. Okay. Like, after Mel does some cursory regular investigation with her skills. The transition I gave, I'm going to redo it. Beginning to drizzle down from above. Not the storm, just some rain preceding it. Uh, does Merrick register as evil as he enters my 60-foot radius? Well, it was only one turn, right? <laughs> it's until my next six turn. seconds. Oh, yeah, I don't think it was. He came after your your spell was done. All right, cool. That's completely fair. Right, because right. it, it was a lot of travel <clears throat> down this kind of town. You say that, but I'm starting to think of something. Uh, Mel said something earlier that just kind of triggered a memory or a thought about escalation and that the first sacrifice may have been a goat, the second Wait, an average... Quick. You want no. this in the podcast, Michael? No, that's Michael? okay. No, I think no, this no. is out of character speculation. It's yeah, you're right. You're right. It was. It was. Good call. I don't actually distrust Merrick. I remembered after I originally distrusted him that Mel rolled a natural 20 on her sense insight, and he registered as actually concerned about this happening. So he's not, like, secretly... Registered as worried, but, yeah, I got you. That's I, true. I don't disagree. My only point was that talking about escalation had got me to think that oh the first victim or the first thing was the animal the second was the goat herd and with a storm brewing like the third thing the important thing maybe you need something a little bit more heroic to sacrifice to and here's a guy that was waiting for us to show up so i'm just saying i'm paranoid and i'm putting things together that maybe don't belong together yeah, I think your character should be paranoid, whereas my character should probably be a bit more trusting of the random citizenry of America. Right. Yeah, it's good role-playing both ways. Sorry. Keep it up. Okay. So, yeah, great. I'm glad we can get a little mystery in tonight. No combat, but hopefully that'll take care of itself soon. Right. And I already said this, but I thought everyone did a good job tonight in breaking down the mystery a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right, folks, I'm signing off and going to sleep. All right, Jim. Have a good hey, week. Good night, Jim. You too. Other titles for this episode available for voting at the Facebook fan page were Horses Aren't Known to String Up Meat. Finally, something I'm trained in. He isn't lying that well. More than one entity or person involved. Goat stew, bread, Copshire ale. And the barn is where they discovered the bodies. <laughs>